So you just found out you need a deep cleaning. What happens next? Hi, my name is Whitney and I'm a dental hygienist. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Let's talk about deep cleanings. So every dental office may do things slightly differently. So that's super important to keep in mind throughout this entire video. And every person's mouth is slightly different also. So please remember, this is just a generalized overview of a deep cleaning procedure. A deep cleaning is also known as SRP, scaling and root planing. And a deep cleaning is needed when your dental x-rays show things like bone loss and tartar below your gums and your periodontal charting probing depths will often show lots of five millimeter pockets and up throughout your mouth. I do have videos explaining explaining more in depth about how your dental provider decides between the different types of cleanings, x-rays, periocharting, etc. So if you'd like to learn more about those details, I'll link those videos of mine in the bottom bar below. But for the purpose of this video, let's talk about what happens after your dental provider decides that your x-rays and periocharting both indicate that you need a deep cleaning. So the first thing is that sometimes that same day initial appointment, they will start the deep cleaning on part of your mouth when you're still in the chair at your first appointment. However, sometimes they can't start on the same day. Maybe because they don't have the proper amount of time needed for a deep cleaning. Maybe they need to send it out to your insurance first, whatever the case. Oftentimes they will reappoint you to start your deep cleaning on a different day after they take all of the assessment information, x-rays, paracharting, the stuff we keep talking about. Now, more often than not, it will take two appointments to complete a deep cleaning. So the first appointment, they will clean one side of your mouth, say your right half. And the second appointment, they will clean the other side of your mouth, say your left half. So you show up to your first half of your mouth appointment. What should you expect? Usually it might take about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. It just depends on the amount of buildup and the amount of bone loss you have. But once you arrive, they will take your medical history. Oftentimes they will also take your blood pressure and then they will numb you up. So you are super comfortable and you won't feel anything. Keep in mind that one full side of your mouth will be numb. So I always recommend my patients to eat before they come just because it's sometimes difficult to eat afterwards if you're still feeling numb. We don't want you to bite your cheek or bite your tongue without you knowing, you know, depending on how long the numbing lasts for you. It is is okay to eat after a deep cleaning. There's no contraindications regarding your teeth or the procedure. However, again, we just don't want you to go home and bite your cheeks or your tongue without realizing it. So next up, once you're nice and numb, we start the cleaning. It really won't be anything bad or anything to be stressing about on your end because once you're numb, you're good. Having said that, I have had patients who don't like needles and don't want to be fully numb. So in those cases, I usually use a liquid gel, which does help take the edge off. But I mean, you know your pain tolerance best. Some Sometimes the gel can work great, but most times it's better to just be fully numb with local anesthetic and be completely comfortable. Having said all of that, always talk with your dental provider because they are the ones looking in your mouth and so they can best guide you on the best numbing option for your situation. So then during the deep cleaning, more things to expect are lots of water. They will use an ultrasonic scaler a lot, so it's a lot of suctioning and a lot of noises. you usually will feel some pressure on your gums, but you should never feel anything sharp. And if you do, let them know. Be like, hey, I feel something. So then we can give you more numbing. Don't think you ever have to power through something that's uncomfortable. If it bothers you, tell us. Oftentimes during the deep cleaning, the clinician may alternate back and forth between the ultrasonic water scaler and the regular hand instruments, which gives you a break from the suction. When we are hand scaling using the regular instruments, it's a little easier, less water. But really when we're using the ultrasonic, it's fine too. We suction it up for you. And then at the end, we will floss and check around your pockets. Sometimes even double check everything with the Explorer as well. Sometimes there will even be a post-op x-ray to confirm we don't see any tartar below the gum line anymore. Again, it just depends on your individual mouth. Lastly, in some cases, we will irrigate your gums with an antiseptic rinse or sometimes even we'll use some type of medication to put inside of your gum pockets. Then you'll be done with one side of your mouth. They usually won't polish your teeth at the end. We save that for another appointment, which we will talk about in a bit. But first, the post-op instructions after a deep cleaning. They are actually super minimal, not too involved. I usually recommend my patients rinse with a warm salt water rinse that day, especially if their gums are sore. It's super soothing for the gums. Just warm up some water and add salt and swish it around your mouth. It works wonders. I've only had one patient ever tell me they needed to take Tylenol that night for gum discomfort. That's usually rare. But I work in a general office, so if we have an extremely severe case of periodontal disease, sometimes we will refer out to a periodontist. Regardless, 
most patients say they are way more sore after working out in the gym than from a deep cleaning at the dentist. But if you are concerned about discomfort, always talk with your dental provider about individual recommendations. But you definitely can't go wrong with that warm salt water rinse. And if you were to have any gum discomfort, it wouldn't last more than a day or so. So now that you finished one side of your mouth, now it's time to come back for the second appointment for the second half of your mouth and do it all again. That second appointment can technically be the next day if your dental office has openings in their schedule, but it's not necessary to come back that soon. You just usually want to get that second half done within a couple weeks of the first. This way, there's less of a chance that bacteria from your unclean side will start traveling to your clean side. Again, a week or two overdue won't make or break your results, but it might make or break your results if you wait months between appointments. So try your best to get back to finish your full mouth deep cleaning in a timely manner. Then, once you're done with your full mouth deep cleaning, you've finished both your right and left sides, you will then schedule for a four to six week re-evaluation appointment. <laughs> I usually just say re-eval, so I was like, oh, I need to say re-evaluation. This is where we recheck the perio chart, we take those probing numbers again, just like we did on the initial appointment, and compare the results. We will also do a regular cleaning on this day, and we will polish to make everything fresh and smooth, and you will not have to be numb this day. The goal is that there are improvements less gum inflammation, healthier tissue. You can't grow bone back, but those gum pockets no longer have inflammation and they no longer have tartar stuck inside of them. So now we can enter the maintenance stage of cleanings. Now, post deep cleaning, after the four to six week re-eval cleaning appointment, patients are recommended to come in for cleanings every three months for at least the first year. After the first year of three month recares, at that first year anniversary appointment, lots of offices will again evaluate whether or not you need to stay on a three month recare or sometimes maybe you'll move to a four month recare. I do have a video all about the different recare plans and the importance of three months versus four months versus six months, which I will of course link in the bottom row below if you'd like to learn more. But what you need to know right now is the most important thing you can personally do during the maintenance stage is to keep up with your home care. If your dental provider recommended an electric toothbrush, keep using it. If they recommended floss, then keep flossing. If they recommended a water flosser, then keep using your water flosser. Same thing with interdental brushes. There's a bunch of different home care regimens they may have recommended for your individual mouth. So truly do the best you can at home to limit your chance of that tartar coming back below your gums. In addition, also make sure you stay consistent with your dental appointments, those recares that we keep talking about. Try not to miss a cleaning appointment. Staying on top of both your dental cleaning appointments and your home care routines are the best things you can do to keep your gums happy and healthy. I hope this video helped you. Please like and subscribe and turn on your notifications if it did. If you want more teeth talk, you can visit my website teethtalkgirl.com or hang out with me on Instagram at teethtalkgirl. And until next time, peace, love, and teeth.